welcome back to the Thought Balloons podcast. I am your host, Jeff Folsham. With me today is an artist, a paper maker, and an all-around interesting guy, Dodgy Roger, the pulp professor. Dodgy, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, hey. Dodgy, I got uh, on to you from a, uh, a mutual friend of ours, Uh I can be Danny on on Twitch. Yes. I, he was using some of your paper to paint some cool things, um, boy. and um, I was interested in your paper for a long time. And then one day you popped up in this chat, and I like immediately was like, "All right, click on name, go to channel, follow," you know. And when I saw you live, I like hopped in your stream and immediately started vibing on what you do. Um, right off the top here. Um, can you tell the listeners kind of what you do when you like like your paper and like the whole ethos and everything? Yeah, well, yeah. So I make recycled paper. Um, I came across it around four years ago now, coming up to four years, I think. Um, and I discovered it quite randomly, which was amazing. Um, I guess I should mention that uh, like I've, I, I've been an artist for a fairly long time. Um, so I was always in that creative zone. Um, and a friend of mine had bought me a kid's paper making kit. Um, I rocked up at the studio one day. He was like, hey, Roger, I've got this random gift for you. I'm like, oh, what is it? And he's like, it's a paper making kit. And at first I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. Sounds cool. Um, and it sat on the kind of shelf in my studio for a while, for a few months. And I was, you know, thinking and thinking. And then um, one day I was actually driving back on a road trip and saw some uh, paper that had been made from denim jeans at a, uh, yeah, at a, uh, like a, kind of like a secondhand shop kind of crafty, crafty place. And so the whole drive back, I was like, I have to make paper. And when I got back, I had the uh, kit ready at the studio and pulled it out and started making paper from my old artworks and like anything that I had around the studio that was uh, made from paper. Um, and at an art studio, there's always, you know, a lot of scraps and people have drawings and myself, I had like old drawings and old prints and all kinds of stuff like that. So yeah, it was just a amazing process in that beginning um being able to turn my old art back into fresh paper that to then make art on um, so yeah i was like super hooked from the start and nowadays i kind of make paper out of all kinds of things from um you know from i don't know from <laughs> from everywhere because there's kind of paper waste all over the place right um, but yeah i kind of focus on these small batches and um release them every week and every week it's kind of different. Um, mm -hmm. So for example, last week I had some paper made, oh, what did I make last week? From some uh, donated manga comics, uh, some raffle ticket stubs. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, my dodgy scraps batches, which are made from like my household recycling. So anything that would have been in our um, paper slash cardboard recycling bin. Right. Um, but yeah, so I pretty much make paper yeah. out of anything that I can get my hands on. Um, and yeah, it's all recycled and the cycle continues, I guess, of the paper being made back into paper. It's really amazing. Yeah. Like I love, I love that idea. And 
I never thought I'd say this, but you have made me regret not keeping my old art. Like I'm not a very <laughs> sentimental person uh, in yeah. general. And I typically like now, like now that I'm like a digital artist and stuff, like it, I just have like files and files and files. Like yes. I don't have, I don't need to like worry about where to store it. So it's, you know, whatever. But you know, when I was like in school and stuff and doing like oh, thousands of charcoal studies or whatever. Right. I was like, I don't really care about this artwork. I don't know. Whatever. They're just studies. It's whatever. So you throw in the recycling bin, right? Yeah, really. Like yeah, yeah. at the end of the semester, I don't need it anymore. Throw it in the bin and whatever. Like don't don't need it anymore. But now, like now that I've met you and like I've seen like what you do and like get in like now, like man, like if only I'd saved some <laughs> of that stuff, I could just like send it send it over to Australia and have have it be turned into like stuff that someone else could probably use. Exactly. Um, I mean, exactly. I don't know. Do you use um? Can you use glossy print like paper like when doing it? Because I have a bunch of like old, not old stock, but like because I still sell these like comics. But like I got a big box of comics, physical yeah, issues yeah. that I, I yeah you do anything with. <laughs> yeah, totally. You can like you know in general any any paper that was paper um, can be turn back into paper mm. <laughs> i know it sounds silly to say um but with the yeah with the heavy gloss print printed um printed material it still works but usually the ink runs a lot more because the ratio is higher right. um uh i don't know the exact science behind it but it usually it, it does like affect the pulp a little bit so right. the outcome won't be like as nice as when you use um you know, higher quality um, offcuts right. and things like that, but it still does work. So definitely possible. Can cool. <laughs> have done before. I've used like magazines and things like, um, you know, like kind of like junk mail that, you know, yeah. from supermarkets and stuff like that. That stuff's usually quite heavily printed, not, not so glossy, mm -hmm. but um, still a similar thing. Yeah. So de definitely, definitely does work. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the comic uh, small press printer that I use is, um, it's all very like a gloss kind of paper that they use like you know just like normal yeah. you know western american like comics you know like the same stuff that like dc and marvel would use yes right? oh totally totally will work totally will work <laughs> that's yeah. always one thing i was like man like because to me it seems like that the gloss would maybe inhibit like binder absorption or something <laughs> like i don't know <laughs> It probably does a little bit, but to be honest, I don't. I don't focus on like the science behind it. I just mm. kind of roll with it and see see how it turns out. You know, <laughs> much more like organic, so, holistic approach. Nice. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, well, uh, when you mentioned that, you know, you didn't keep any of your um, stuff from, you know, your drawing at at, mm -hmm. at school and um, in your classes and things. I'm pretty much the opposite. I'm definitely a I like to call it a creative hoarder, but, <laughs> um, you know, I'm definitely a bit of a hoarder and especially with things that I know can be used again or could be turned into something else. Um, so yeah, I've never had a shortage of things to turn into paper, but also other stuff to like, you know, make things with and turn into artworks and I collect all kinds of stuff. So, uh, the transition into paper making was, um, very easy if yeah because i had so many things <laughs> if that makes sense yeah yeah <laughs> yeah no it's like um i feel like i might well i'm not exactly like this guy but have you, i don't know if you know of john uh schwartzwelder the like almost infamous writer of the simpsons that nobody really thinks exists because he like oh, wrote true. all these like amazing like episodes of The Simpsons, but he's like such a recluse. Like, there's only one photo like photo of him at a staff meeting. Like, the legend oh, is true. like, yeah, the legend's like he he's 
the legend has it that he's also the basis for Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec. <laughs> like oh, just this, yeah, yeah, like yeah. he would eat steak <laughs> for breakfast and like big br- like broom like mustache and all this stuff. But like rumor has it like he would just he was a chain smoker and he would like smoke so much um that uh eventually like the writers and stuff were like, well, this guy's doing like such good work anyway let's just let him work from home kind of thing (laughs) like and he just wouldn't like never gives interviews never does anything right so it's like really hard to like nail down like a like a you know uh, like a timeline or like a backlog of his work or anything um i feel like you know fingers crossed right like if i ever become like successful or whatever and eventually like because you know you know how like successful artists and stuff they'll like print like like a collection of their work or whatever from like the beginning and all that kind of stuff and i'd be like yeah i don't have anything from that like i just don't (laughs) save anything like i can't sorry that's one thing i can't capitalize on because i just don't have it (laughs) yeah shit. i guess that's kind of cool too because it makes it very rare if people do have your early work then it means that it's super rare as well right that is true. Yeah, I mean, there are, there yeah. are, they do exist. I didn't like recycle everything, but yeah. <laughs> most of the stuff that does exist are things that like, um, I just happened to like take home for whatever reason and like left somewhere. And then like parents found it, got a hold of it and like put it in an art portfolio and are, are like, no, you can't throw this away because you're going to want it one day. And I'm like, yeah, probably not. <laughs> but now I'm like, I do, but not because it's like, and now it's not because like, oh yeah, I want to like print it in a book and like show people my early, now it's like, no, I want to send it to Australia and get it made into paper. Yeah. <laughs> get it ripped I want up. destroyed and turned into something people can use. Exactly. That's way cooler though. You want to yeah, no, it, it is. I'll rip it all up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, but that's like one of the things like, like that whole like nonsense mentality is like why I got into comics too. Cause like, I don't think comics are necessarily like, I'm not going to shame anybody for being like into collecting comics. Like if you like to collect them, that's fine. If you're doing it for the enjoyment of the media, I fully support that. But like Mm. in the nineties, when they sold the first like action comics, number one, first appearance of Superman, it was from the thirties and sold for like over a million dollars. And everybody then was like, Oh fuck. Comics are like, We'll, we'll buy comics and then you know in 20 years they'll be worth something or whatever no they're not they're not going to be worth anything that's not how this works the only reason that action comics was like super rare in the first place and it was a it was from the 30s <laughs> and yeah, it was being yeah. sold in the 90s that's like 60 years right but like also during world war ii there was paper drives to like make wadding for ammunition and stuff. And a lot of magazines, newspapers and comic books got turned into wadding for ammunition. So the ones that survived, not only are they like landmark things, right? Like the first appearance of Superman, but like they just don't exist, right? Like they're just not around. So that's why it's expensive. But so many people bought uh, Jim Lee's uh, Amazing X Men number one. I think it was Amazing X Men. It's Marvel Comics. Just they name things like Amazing Superior, what, Ultimate, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know which one it was, but I think it was the Amazing X Men. And it was like Jim Lee number one, early '90s. It right after the Superman thing, and people bought like so many of these things. And it's like I think today, I. Th- think it might still be the most sold like issue of any comic ever (laughs) because people were like i'm gonna buy 10 of these things and then they'll be worth something one day well when everybody buys 10 versions of it and everybody has 10 copies the and they all save it the the market's just so saturated like that book is not It's worth more, but it's barely worth more than cover price, you know? Yeah. Like, it is not appreciated much. Um, And so, for me, I I follow, like, 
you know, I think it was Stan Lee who said this, or maybe it was a different art uh, comic book, you know, God, as it were. But like, to me, a comic is something like, you know, especially the the magazines, you know, the, the issues, right? The, the softbacks. Mm. You pick it up at the store, read it when you can, roll it up, put it in your back pocket, sit on it, cr- like crease it, cre- like whatever, and then recycle the damn thing when you're done with it. You know, yeah, true. Like, I'm just not like, I'm I if I'm gonna collect comics and stuff, like I'd prefer to collect collected like trades and like actual graphic novels, but single issues and stuff, I'm nah, like use them, abuse them, lose them. That's my <laughs> my theory. Yeah, I think I'm in the same boat. I I never got into comics massively. Um, growing up, I did uh collect Mad magazines and things for a while, and um. But I kind of, yeah, I'm, I, well, I mean, if you think about these days, I literally rip comics up and turn them into um, <laughs> paper. Uh, so I think if I ever got my hands on any of those super rare ones, I'd probably be tempted to do the same thing just to, uh, <laughs> stir, just to stir it up, you know? <laughs> but Can um, you imagine? Oh, bro! Can you imagine so getting good. like action <laughs> comics number one, like a yes. comic book worth like a million dollars, and just throwing it in a blender? Yeah, and dude, turning it into best. paper to be painted <laughs> on. But then each sheet would sell for, you know, so the comic was a million, and then <laughs> I'll make like what twenty sheets or something, thirty mm-hmm. sheets, and then each sheet is a hundred k you know yeah <laughs> or more i don't know whatever um yeah uh but um oh, yeah insane. man anything anything paper like it's not gonna last forever and uh yeah 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 i mean honestly you'd probably have to put that in with like a lot of like fresh pulp anyway because yes acid erosion yeah. and all that other stuff anyway for sure for sure for sure <laughs> i've actually we did a um I did a collaboration group show a couple of years ago with, uh, they're called Stupid Crap. Um, they do like artist releases, but um, we did a Masters of the Universe uh, themed group exhibition. So nice. all the paper was made from, uh, pa- well, the base was premium pulp. So made from recycled fine art printing offcuts. Um, but then the chunks were like the mini uh, mini Masters of the Universe comics that would come with the toys, like the little, oh, cool. yeah, you know, like the little ones. But um, we did a video of me like ripping them up and putting them in the blender and then making the paper. And <laughs> so many of the comments were like, "What are you guys doing? What is this? What a waste!" <laughs> like all this hate in the in the comments. And um, I actually loved that. Like I loved it so yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, they weren't rare. Like I mean they were rare ish but they were only worth like five to ten australian dollars each like right not, you know they're not worth like hundreds or thousands or whatever um yeah so yeah i love that i love that people were getting like worked up about it it was great no yeah, yeah i think uh <laughs> there's that sort of you know chaotic bend to it where it's just yes kind of like i think both of us in this like segment uh, that we're doing right now we think we have both had a bit of a maniacal laugh to the (laughs) idea of destroying like something that's someone like where where in reality doesn't really mean much other than like sentimental value but like people get like very kind of on edge about it and it's that kind of cognitive dissonance that i like to like shake up a bit i guess is a is a way so like yeah i love it i love it (laughs) like yeah destroy it destroy (laughs) the the masters of the and then make new art on it which is like way cooler exactly exactly dude yeah exactly and we had we had a hundred plus artists in that show so i mean the artworks were amazing and like you know that the comics would have been worth i think we used like five or something so let's say 50 bucks worth of vintage comics but the artworks were worth not not in terms of what they sold for but in terms of the quality and all the art like you know worth so much more so um yeah, exactly yeah so which is amazing i love it man this yeah. gives me such so many ideas like i would love to take 
Like, so uh, I, I talked to Mick Byers uh, a couple uh, days ago. Uh, and for our listeners, that would be what, like two, three episodes ago now. <laughs> um so a couple of weeks back for our listeners but uh he he's a huge superman fan and i'm a i'm a big batman fan i would love to get you to make some superman paper so i can paint batman on it and give it to mick (laughs) i think that would be amazing (laughs) just to see what he does and if he like just takes out a lighter and sets it on fire all the better like that would just be amazing (laughs) i love that i love that can do for sure (laughs) that would be so great um (laughs) but yeah speaking of like paper and recycling and stuff Mm -hmm. um i know that i have a pretty um let's say a cursory interest it's definitely something i'm passionate about but given like Mm. just very busy in my life i don't know a lot about it but Mm. i got to assume that you have some kind of interest or passion or maybe personal like ethos about environmentalism in general um yeah do you like i know like i had taken a course uh, when i was getting my uh my bfa we had to take you know gen- general education courses and for one of my science classes i took a and like i forget the name of the course but it was basically about like alternative energies and like how to combat mm-hmm. global warming it was like a class that was like the first time it was ever like offered like we were like an experimental like class like it was a brand new syllabus not tested and like i really really enjoyed that course um and to like this day like i'll watch youtube videos here and there about like that subject so like what is your um like what is your interest in that like do you have i don't know yeah. like any personal connection to that yeah i think i think um like you know i can i i more recent uh, oh sorry i'll say again more like more recently i've become you know more caring and aware of like my personal impact um Mm -hmm. on the environment and the world and our future um but that's only you know within the last few years actually probably because of getting more involved with the paper making process and what I'm doing oh, cool. um, with that. But um, as a starting point, like as a artist and creative, I've always been interested in um, reusing things and recycling and upcycling um, things to make art um, with. Um, so I guess that's kind of where it started um but in terms of my yeah opinions on all the big tough subjects (laughs) um i've only really started getting you know a bit more passionate about that yes since over over the last couple over the last few years um not to say that uh you know i'm a huge waster or do you know in the past i've you know nobody's perfect whatever we all waste things and here and there and um do that kind of thing but um yeah i think when i discovered uh my when i got more into my art process i became more aware of like yeah reusing things to make art and to make art on um and that just kind of became a big part of yeah like who i am and the way that i function as a creative um yeah and on a kind of uh i don't know how to put it but um like we i started a studio with a few friends around 10 years ago now and you know when we moved in there like we didn't like you know we didn't buy new stuff to like deck out the studio we were always finding things on the side of the road and like Mm -hmm. you know finding old furniture and things like that to like deck the studio out and um yeah it really just became part of my creative process yeah i hope that made sense i kind (laughs) of was waffling on but yeah um yeah and i think you know yeah the future seems scary in terms of the way Right. That the you know world is going so um 
you know, personally, like I can obviously make less of an impact with what I do with my business, definitely. Right. Um, but also, you know, in my personal life, like being more aware about, you know, what I waste and, you know, household kind of things. But um, I think as a business and as a creative, like I, yeah, it was great to be able to focus in on that and have, you know, be able to say that like, um, you know, as dodgy paper, like I don't, you know, I, I don't have, I don't, I, I hardly waste anything really. So um, yeah. And all the equipment I use and things like that is all recycled or repurposed. And um, right. yeah, so it's been, it's been an awesome journey. Yeah. yeah. I, it's something I admire and is like a big reason why I wanted to get you on the podcast because it's something mm. like, uh, like you said, I've had like a, uh, you know, it, an ever growing interest in it. Um, and I think we've probably all heard the, that saying, um, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our descendants. Um, yes. yep. and, you know, when I heard that phrase for the first time, it like, it really struck a chord. Like I was, you know, I, we we grew up in that generation of, um, recycle, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know, reuse, mm -hmm, repurpose, mm -hmm. recycle, all that stuff. So it was something like, just kind of like built into me, but it was just like, kind of wrote memorization there was never any like purpose behind it right i never yeah, had yeah. any like personal connection to it and it's always something weird about my brain where i can hear just like a single saying and it like just like a light switch just flip something in my head where i'm like okay i finally get it and now i'm very passionate about this thing um mm -hmm. and so yeah for me like i really like working on paper with like ink and you know brushes and and quills and nib you know pen nibs dip ink and all that stuff um mm -hmm. and i do have some projects that i would love to do on paper but more and more as i go along i'm just thinking like well it's just gonna sit around and then if i don't dispose of it properly and all that jazz is just like it's so much easier and less in my head less impactful to do it digitally than it is to do it traditionally yes, um not sure, to mention sure. the just like the ease of use of like a program like you know photoshop or clip studio where i can it's just faster as well <laughs> you know yeah for sure for but sure. yeah it definitely is just like and there's many reasons to it, but it's there's like that kind of um, environmental impact of just like buying paper and you know paints and brushes like that oh, all has to come from yeah. somewhere, you know, that all yeah. has to come from somewhere. And there's got to be an environmental impact to it. And, you know, my I'm lucky like my house, like we're reducing our like electric bill by you know using geothermal you know in part and like various other things and like so like we're trying to like constantly like reduce like that side of it as well like because i know like well like running my computer 24 7 is probably bad for the environment <laughs> of like coal yes. burning or natural gas burning power plants or whatever but it's yeah, also like yeah. i'm a huge supporter of like nuclear energy like solar wind like ocean current kind of generators like um anything that is clean and more more than just clean like re renewable right exactly like, yeah if, if we yeah. could like i would rather be like full solar wind and water uh than like even nuclear uh, cause I mean, there's like issues with nuclear waste and stuff, but bury that deep enough in, you know, the desert somewhere and it'll be fine. But like, <laughs> True. it's also a finite resource. Like eventually maybe hundreds of thousands, like hundreds of years from now, thousand years from now, whatever, like if we were just all nuclear, like eventually the uranium is going to run out, right? <laughs> like eventually exactly, the nuclear yeah. is going to run out. And so if, uh, that's why I push more, you know, things like that, but it is, you know, it's always something that's sort of just in the back of my head, you know, like um, it may not be something that uh, I, I obsess about every single day, but it is sort of like, yeah, you know, if, if, if I can make as little of an impact on 
this earth uh physically as possible yeah that would exactly be nice. that yeah. would be nice <laughs> I don't, um, yeah, I, I try, I, I don't really get into the, you know, whole, you know, like politics or, um, you know, behind it and, mm. um, you know, all that kind of stuff, which, you know, maybe I will as I get older. Um, but I, yeah, as like, I definitely try to do it on a personal level. And, um, yeah, like since, uh, since starting making paper, it's definitely changed my view about a lot of, um, right. yeah, a lot of ways that, you know, and, 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 more specifically within the creative community, like, um, you know, art materials and all things like that. Like you were saying before, you know, when you, when you want to do physical art, like you need to buy brushes and paint and all the different things. And um, even myself, like I've bought so many different art materials over the years that, you know, some of them are probably still new, like sitting at mm -hmm. the studio unused. And, um, you know, a lot of it gets wasted and you buy brushes and then, mm -hmm you know they you know you get yeah. so um i think it's really important as a creative to try to like yeah like reduce your waste within your process and um obviously with dodgy uh sorry not, not with dodgy with digital art like the uh impact is <laughs> a lot less so um you know that's a good way to approach it as well so i think it's awesome yeah it's also less impact on the wallet too <laughs> yes exactly yes exactly because you don't need to get different materials and all that right. so yeah, so I, yeah i haven't figured out how to recycle a, a paintbrush yet like yeah that's just well it's gonna end up in a landfill when the bristles start falling <laughs> out and stuff you know exactly i've actually i haven't recycled them but i just have a massive box of you know broken ones and mm -hmm. uh you know found ones and stuff at the studio for maybe a future something who knows what it'll turn into right <laughs> you know like an installation or use it to use them to make something else or yeah. See, that's cool. like, um yeah. and that's something where i'm not really like knowledgeable or like that's not where my creativity lies as you say installation mm. and like 3d art or like that just like found object stuff is not like i i had to do that as part of my studies as well and it was just something oh, yep. that was so not anything that i understood <laughs> you know? yeah i guess yeah i think like i kind of I kind of grew into it creatively because I'd always like even growing up, I'd always have collections of, you know, my different toys and whatever. Um, and I would have them on display like in my room or, mm. um, and, and then as I got older, I started collecting different things and also things to get creative with. So I've always enjoyed, you know, having them also like having them ordered. So I know where everything is, but also nice. like on display. So when I had, friends over or had people over I had something to like uh, let's say show off but you know like something to show <laughs> like you know like here's my art right. and here's my here's my things and that kind of thing um and then as an artist uh and having a studio space where there's other people there as too, uh, other people there too um you know that kind of became part of my process like building you know making my space look really interesting so when people came around they'd be like oh what is this and yeah um, yeah so I kind of see the creative use in everything that I have like every single object is like I'm like you know that could be this or you know that little piece of wood could turn into something else or um yeah yeah <laughs> Ooh, I like that so you mentioned yeah. like um as a child or as a kid um mm. kind of and for lack of a better term like to show off like when you had friends over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. were you because i'm always interested in like um you know how like i grew up compared to other people grew up mm. were you the kid who like were you the house that people hung out at because like i was I did not usually have friends over to my house. I typically went to other people's houses. Yeah, true. Um, I think a bit of both. Definitely getting older into the teenage years. I loved having people around um, because I had like a little music set up to like, you know, play around with the making music and um, drawing and things like that. But um, uh, yeah, in general, maybe. 
I was kind of the place to hang out for a while. Cool. <laughs> um, also because, yeah, like I grew up with my mum uh, looking after me and, uh, you know, had, yeah, had a, had a nice backyard and stuff in suburban Melbourne. So, um, yeah, I think like, yeah, I'd say yes, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I wonder, it's just very interesting <laughs> yeah. to like, you know, compare and contrast these kinds of things. Cause I wonder if yeah, yeah. I would have been more of the, like, put the toys on display kind of kid. If I had more people hanging out. Mm, true, um, true. Cause I never really had, I, <laughs> again, for lack of a better term i never had to show off for anybody yeah. so like yeah, yeah i all of my action figures and stuff which i loved playing with uh i know i mentioned like in the the first episode when i talk about like just my own personal journey like playing with action figures was a huge thing and i was very particular mm. about which ones i liked and which ones i wanted to play with but at the end of the day, when it was time to put stuff away, I threw them all in a big box and shoved them in a closet. Like it True. wasn't yeah. like it wasn't like yeah. I put them up on a shelf and poses and <laughs> stuff like that, which I think is really cool. And like I would definitely remark on that kind of stuff when I'd go over to friends' houses. But yeah, I, I never had that kind of need or want in my own life um my sisters are much older than i am i didn't really need to like like peacock around for them because it was just like oh we have a little baby look at him he's our little brother we like anything <laughs> he does is like so i never had to like seek for approval in that way either um true, true. so yeah i wonder if my lack of sentimentality is just like i never really needed to because i never had the reason to <laughs> yeah i guess like yeah i don't have any um brothers or sisters either so um you know i guess i was yeah having friends around um more often maybe hmm. um but yeah i guess and my attachment to like objects and things like that and my eye for seeing the use in objects um definitely came from my dad as well because he was a well is a bit of a hoarder and collects all kinds of stuff um his problem is that he never kind of finishes the projects that he picks the things up for right um, and being much older means he has a lot more stuff <laughs> um so hopefully i'm not heading to that same you know on that same road i'd like to like use all the things that i collect uh quicker yeah <laughs> well i mean you do have the perspective yeah. right you have that um you have that kind of inspiring force to look mm. at where it's like oh i can see my my inclinations or my tendencies to go down this path but here is an example of something and i yes. might not want to achieve the exact same thing so i will use the stuff that i collect <laughs> you know exactly <laughs> you get to scratch the itch of being a squirrel and hoarding things but then you actually use them you know yes yeah but or I, I give I them to other have, people yeah or yeah. yeah or that too but i definitely have that uh a little bit of that i don't collect a lot of stuff but um i mean i have a box here of ink uh that i want to eventually do a stupidly intensely like work heavy project on that's just dumb but like, <laughs> uh, i i have this bottle of like eight colored like nine colors of ink uh, with like glitter in them and stuff because I have Ooh. this stupid idea of making a wizard's spell tome and like oh, sick. Um, I started doing this when I played a wizard in D&D &D many years ago and I thought like oh it'd be a really cool exercise to kind of get into the mind of a wizard right so like I don't know how much D&D &D you play or how much our listeners play but just a quick example wizards have to study and figure things out like a puzzle right they're not a natural magician like a sorcerer in dungeons and dragons who are just born with magic a wizard oh. gets it through constant study and like almost a scientific approach to magic where they like experiment and break things down and they come up with their own system of notation and like they figure out what works for them and then they can cast magic and so i had this idea when i was playing a wizard to like really get into the headspace i wanted to like break down the spells like 
if it's you know fireball obviously a component of that would be fire but like what else goes into <laughs> summoning fire and like projecting it out from your body to like injure another creature and so it got to this like breaking down like coming up with a list of elements and all these different like modular pieces that i could then like turn into magic circles and like stuff and it was all of that like you know dr strange full metal alchemist magic circle design was then paired with like a journal of like so i tried this today and i found out that you need to like combine this element and this element and like invoke the name of this god in order to produce this particular spell and i i want to go back to that because i never finished that project and i want to take that even further which is stupid because it's a it's a dumb idea in general like it may be interesting <laughs> but it's it's useless like it's not like it's like who's gonna get any benefit from it right other than like oh that's cool right which i guess maybe is reason enough but like i want to even do things like um say like you cast the spell web right which makes a bunch of webs uh that like slow people down and you know so stick people to instead. surfaces well, mm -hmm. to cast that, you need cobwebs as a material component. And I would love to get so into this book as to like write things like how to care and raise spiders, like how to care for and raise spiders, like and go into like which spiders produce a high volume of spider silk versus like really strong spider silk, <laughs> you know, things like that or like how to ritualistically dissect a newt to get eye of newt for your like potions and stuff and like have anatomical so drawings of animals and plants and like setups and stuff alongside like the magic circles and things. And then I want to hand write that entire book on paper and bind it into an actual physical spell tome. Oh, man, um, that's sick though. To, to date, I started this project last year during quarantine, uh, like the beginning of quarantine, so about a year ago. Um, I have done one spell in a Google Doc and have written nothing, but I bought all the ink and a quill. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <nice. laughs> like, I'm definitely like in that, like, oh, this would be really cool. And each bottle of ink is only like eight dollars, ten dollars. I could probably afford to get some ink and now yeah, it's like well shit i may not use this for years and by the time i get around to it ink's probably going to be dry <laughs> true shit better get on it <laughs> right oh man but uh but yeah it's definitely uh yeah i, I can definitely uh, appreciate the idea of collecting things and then wanting to use them because you otherwise it's just going to collect dust and then what are you doing with it you know yes exactly um, exactly but so uh, we have a lot more to talk about i got some more questions here i want to get into um mm -hmm. your actual art that you make and uh some no other stuff here uh but i think uh for now we're gonna head to a break uh get Ooh. some you know listen to some advertisements for a few different things uh when we uh we'll listeners uh enjoy some ads and we'll be right back with dodgy paper yes yes do you want to class up your gaming are you sick of card tables and cheap plastic sleeves for your character sheets do you like real wood and are convinced magnets are the only magic we have left in our current age of science then head over to legendcraft.ca to spruce up your tabletop gaming setup they offer felt top gaming tables with add ons like cup holders, tablet holders, dice trays, roll boxes, and more. Newly released in January 2021 is their Magna Tracker system. With versions for both health and spell tracking, these sleek and stylish tracking boards come with magnetized tracking pips that allow you to slide them back and forth along clean cut channels making tracking your health and spell slots easy to use and read, all without the constant erasing and writing on your character sheet. And did I mention that both the Magna Trackers and the tables are customizable and personalizable? That's right, your table and or Magna Tracker will be one of a kind when you order at Legendcraft. 
Legendcraft is partnering with me to offer you a 5% discount on your orders at legendcraft.ca. That's right, you can get a 5% discount when you enter the code F underscore ART at checkout. That's F underscore ART. Go to legendcraft.ca. That's L E G E N D C R A F T dot C A with discount code F underscore art for 5% off. Legendcraft.ca. Order today. If you like this podcast and would like to support the show, head over to patreon.com slash Fulsham underscore art. As little as $1 per month, you not only support Thought Balloons and get to submit questions to be answered by myself and the guest host, but you will also have access to my webcomic three to four weeks before the release of the public and my weekly update blog. At higher tiers, you'll gain access to full issues and short story comics, and you can even see progress and add input to projects I'm working on. That's patreon.com slash F-O-U-L-S-H-A-M underscore A-R-T to support Thought Balloons today. Welcome back from the break. I am sitting here with Dodgy Roger, the pulp professor, for the second half of our conversation. Uh, Dodgy, welcome back from the break. <laughs> Yo, thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs> um, so we uh, we touched on a lot of stuff in the in the beginning, paper making, environmentalism, and uh, sort of just we started to talk about art and uh, creativity. Uh, you go by another name on the internet. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Chi he he is that? Am I saying that correctly? <laughs> yes, that's correct. <laughs> Fair enough. I wanted to make sure it wasn't. I, I thought I was saying it correctly. I just wanted to make sure. Um, I would Chee-hee. love to talk about because I do have a lot of artists on here. I am an artist myself, so talking about art is definitely something that um, I'm interested in talking. Uh, to people hmm. about and we'd started talking uh, before the break about collecting a lot of things for projects uh, that may or may not be left yes. unfinished um i would love to like talk to you about like your process for just doing artwork i've been scrolling through uh your instagram here and you have a bunch of different style stuff i see like some little figurines and and things here Mm -hmm. some Mm -hmm. figurative work but a lot of what i'm seeing is non-figurative work with shape and pattern um this is something that i really love the style and the look of uh just aesthetically i really like this but also as someone who is a very figurative focused artist yeah um yeah like with comics and everything and i've talked about it on the podcast before how my brain just i can't do single image artwork i'm always always fascinated to talk to people about their process especially when you create stuff like you do these are just single pieces of artwork Mm -hmm. um do you have especially like i'm really interested to hear your answer to this question because you're um in some respects i guess an abstract artist um do you have a story in mind when you're creating this stuff or like an a, a mood or an emotion you're trying to invoke from the audience um in a way kind of i to give you some backstory i got i you know i was always drawing as a kid and you know as kind of not everybody but as a lot of us do um you're more creative when you're younger um Mm -hmm. and then i stopped for a while and then got back into it through graffiti so writing my name over and over and over and over and over and over on mm. things and at home and at school and um, all over the place. Um, and that's kind of le- what led me to the repetition side of things within my mm. creative process. Um, so I'd never really had a story to it when I started out, you know, just writing my name, Chi He He, like over and mm. over, over and over, over and over. Um, but definitely, as I got a bit older, I got into this mindset where I did want to tell 
you know, a little bit of a story with it. And I think that was more for my own, um, what's the word, not like enjoyment or to keep myself interested. Mm -hmm. um, so I would kind of build this little narrative in my head that I was, uh, that I would be like receiving signals from alien planets and like gotcha. catching these, yeah, like catching these little bits of like, you know, transmissions and that would uh, end up creating the shapes and the lines and the things that I was painting at the time. Um, so it's definitely kind of an underlying story, but I've never really fleshed out that story into, to, to have more meaning. Um, but I guess like, yeah, my work is definitely abstract and kind of, um, it's all uh, freestyle compositions. So I don't plan what's happening, whether that whether it be like a large scale mural or a small right. painting or a drawing. Um, I kind of just, you know, get in the zone, go with the flow and see how the composition turns out. Um, cool. Luckily, it works most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, like sometimes, you know, I might be less happy with the outcome, um, but in general, it does work 99% of the time. Um, so yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, the kind of story behind it would be, you know, getting in, getting in that creative zone. And, right. um, and that's where the uh, transmission kind of vibe came from. Um, I also really enjoyed, you know, having that in my head when I was out on painting missions, like, you know whether you know on the street in illegal situations um <laughs> it would keep my it would keep my excitement like it would bring the situation it would, it would give the situation like another level of excitement because it would be like oh you know i'm out here like technically doing something i shouldn't be doing but you know i'm receiving these transmissions and it's all for a cause or something you know so gotcha. um yeah <laughs> i dig it that's kind so, of that was the that was the vibe yeah <laughs> yeah it makes a lot of sense because like looking at a lot of this line pattern um this, uh, artwork that you do does have this sort of otherworldly um mm. intrigue to it um i mean I, I love looking at this stuff so like it's really cool to like hear like you have maybe not like a specific message or like but you have like a vibe right like you have this yeah. idea of receiving transmissions and kind of writing them down uh for the world to in air quotes decipher right there's sort of like exactly. a mystery yeah. to it all that's uh definitely something like i picked up when like first seeing uh like some of these images on your instagram i was like oh man this is cool like I could uh, and like now hearing like the backstory, I can definitely tell um, it, it's something where like, you know, some of these like murals or the stuff that you've painted on vans and stuff like mm -hmm. I could see this like scrolling past like a screen or something on like an alien, you know, desktop yes. <laughs> computer or like on a ship's computer or something. Kind of like, you know, the Matrix scrolled, right? Yeah. Like I yeah, could definitely yeah, yeah. see a lot of these like patterning, like being like almost a language or something. Um, yeah, I dig yeah, it. it. No, cheers. It, it also it also kind of became its own language because, um, well, through, you know, I started doing letters, uh, you know, in, in the kind of graffiti mm -hmm format so you know you want everybody to know your name and who you know who did who did that piece um but what i really enjoyed about doing that uh, about painting my word was actually adding all these extra doodads around the piece which would just be like extra shapes and extra lines and hmm. um you know all that stuff so uh and then one day i was like well you know people know people should be able to know who I am without like reading my name. So then I just started painting the shapes by themselves um, and just doing the lines because it's much more fun than having to like right. put my letters there. And um, <laughs> yeah, it was just like a more free, more free process. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely like a, an immediately recognizable style too. Mm -hmm. 
like there's a consistency like I'm, yeah, I'm scrolling back now like let's see what's this picture uh of course i click on one and it's deciding to like take a really long time <laughs> to load um yeah i just clicked on one from 219 weeks ago oh uh, shit that's yeah. like four <laughs> years right if i do my math real quick wow, that's like four know. years ago and uh no i mean the stuff like it's still like uh it's definitely has like a slightly different vibe to some of the more recent stuff but like you you definitely have developed a like consistent sort of artistic language yeah uh, which yeah. is really cool yeah. to see oh, um, thank you yeah that's kind of yeah that's 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 been my kind of mission now to um yeah like you know keep a consistency with the composition as a whole like whether I'm painting on a canvas or a piece of my paper. Um, and yeah, it's funny, like a lot of people early on at the studio and people I'd run into, they'd be like, why are you always drawing the same thing over and over again? Like, can't you just, you know, try to <laughs> do this or try to do this? I'm like, nah, but I, I just want to like, I like doing this. It makes me happy, it yeah. makes me chill. Um, and yeah, I'm really glad I just kept on doing that because um, yeah, it's like a, yeah it's me <laughs> it's me <laughs> there's one here of yeah. a uh it looks like a th mouth in a thumbprint that i really like on this blue blue ink on paper oh like a little stamp thing it, maybe i don't know if it's a stamp okay. it just says ink on paper uh you, <laughs> you oh not... yes no yep it's a little Old... smiling mouth yeah like yep, a bunch yep. of lines around it around it yeah 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 i know the one that's from a while ago. Um, yeah, oh yeah. This is I'm I like I I specifically was like <laughs> scrolling really far back to try and like see some of like the more early uh yeah, nice. work uh when you're talking about just like graffiti lettering and stuff like that. So I yeah I just yeah. I just held the scroll button for a long time. <laughs> and uh I that's why I'm so far back in the in the log, but I'm just like yeah, scrolling yeah. past stuff and I'm like, oh, that one's really cool. That one's really cool. Like I, I definitely <laughs> dig a lot of this stuff. Uh, but there was one in particular. Uh, this is kind of. And I think I'd know the answer to this because I did read the description, but there's one recent, uh, more recent image, I should say, uh, hmm. from last year, almost a year ago. Um, hmm. It says uh, painted into the floor. <laughs> um there you have your line work and like little asterisk symbol and stuff but then there's a, a person i don't i can't tell if that's you but there's a person in a white oh uh, yes yeah kind of jumpsuit lying on the floor with the lines painted across them that is um, me yeah <laughs> so i gotta assume that you painted the design on the floor right and then laid on top of it and had someone else paint the the image like the yes. the bonnet like continue it over top of you correct yeah okay yeah so that was for that was for a um art uh festival kind of yeah like an art street art festival i guess um mm -hmm. at the start of last year 2020 yeah mm -hmm. um but yeah, yeah I painted this is a 50 masses. weeks ago so it would have been yeah February. um i painted a massive floor at this festival and then um a photographer a photographer shannon who was part of um the program she was doing like artist portraits so yeah she had wow. the kind of concept to do that shot from above with me um cool yeah like as part of the mural but yeah they <laughs> she had a couple of helpers so i just laid there in the white suit and they uh, put the paint back over the back over the suit and actually on my face as well I think a little bit um yeah so that's the it difficult was, um, thing about uh Instagram is I can't zoom in <laughs> no you can't yeah it's not yeah a super high res <laughs> yeah. but um yeah that was a really fun one and I really enjoy painting floors now instead of um walls or Actually, if I had the choice, like I'd rather paint floors as choice number one because it's just such a fun process. And it's also 
like physically it's actually easier for me than okay. having to paint a wall because you know when you're painting a wall you have to like um you know bend go up the ladder like all that kind of stuff right whereas painting the floor you can kind of chill with the big roller extender and you just kind of like i mean this is going to sound cheesy but you're almost like dancing with the mm -hmm. with the artwork you know like yeah it's very um very fun very fun i wonder if that's why pollock put his canvases on the yeah floor. exactly yeah possibly i mean and uh, you know uh with, with with that like they're obviously very big canvases so right um, if you got the floor space but yeah possibly i mean it's so yeah it's so free yeah, yeah. so speaking of <laughs> dancing uh this is a question i did want to ask um <laughs> Do you, when you like, so you, you mentioned that these are all sort of like, you just go, right? You just start yes. drawing and you just, uh, so to get into the flow state, do you have, um, uh, do you listen to music? Do you like, do you listen to podcasts or uh, yeah. what do you sort of, do, do you listen to anything <laughs> when doing this or is it just sort of silent meditation? Yeah, look, I, I've been... I wouldn't say that there's one ritual that I have that kind of, um, you know, sets that off. Um, uh, going back in time, I uh, used to think that it was because of the green medicine that I would smoke um, mm -hmm. <laughs> that would get me into the flow. And then, uh, but getting older, I realized that it's not about that. Mm -hmm. um, and but definitely about music, uh, not about music. Um, yeah, definitely. I kind of, I'm a pretty chill guy in general. Um, so I kind of just, I just go with the flow. I'll be listening to whatever I'm listening to that day. Um, I kind of consider myself a bit lucky, I guess, talking about it now because, um, yeah, I find that when I have the focus and because I'll be passionate about the job or the wall or whatever I'm doing if it's a yeah if it's a job or like if it's a paid thing or a not paid thing or whatever I'm always still stoked to rock up and um you know paint on the surface provided so um yeah I just get stoked on the on 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 doing the on on on, do, on painting yeah heck yeah <laughs> um so yeah there isn't really like yeah there's not there's not one thing I find I yeah I find that weird because I I you know, I've listened to a lot of artists talk about their process and, you know, one person will be like, you know, I'll chuck on this type of music and I mm -hmm. have to like listen to this first and then start. Um, yeah, I kind of just, yeah, I'm just I think I'm, to I'm, get into I'm, it. I think I'm more similar to you. Um, mm. I don't necessarily need a particular playlist or anything either. I do like uh, listening to something when I'm working. Um, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I don't necessarily need a particular, uh, like, you know, when I'm writing, uh, stuff, I do like listening to instrumental or ambient stuff. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I, that's only because I find the words distracting when I'm trying to do words. <laughs> For sure. Um, I'm the same. Yeah. But when I, when I'm drawing or doing, um, you know, anything that's not uh verbal or word based um yeah music of any variety or I like podcast put a tv show on hop in a discord call with like 15 people in it and just <laughs> interject exactly. here and there or listen to their conversation uh yeah. streams you know pretty much any kind of it's almost like just something to block out the world I guess. Yeah, 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 really yeah. All I need. Yeah, no, nah, I'm the same, and uh, yeah, like I'm, I'm the same in the way that if I'm drawing or making paper, like I can listen or be involved in a conversation or mm. um, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I feel, I, yeah, I, I love that, and I, I guess I'm kind of used to that from uh, working at the studio as well. Like we have, um, well, throughout throughout the last ten years or so that I've um been a part of the space like we've usually had at least five to ten people sharing the space um cool. so you know i'm used to having those interactions while i'm working um anyway so yeah it kind of helped to 
build up that because yeah I, I do know a lot of artists who kind of need their own space to work or you know they can't talk to you at the same time as painting or drawing or um yeah but uh yeah I'll just roll with it <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah so i know that's something else like when you say feeling fortunate or feeling lucky like i definitely have that uh that same sort of appreciation for the skill or whatever mm. ability to be able to kind of put on whatever <laughs> like because i know like i've talked to some artist friends of mine who are like oh no like when i'm when i'm working like i, I either need it to be silent or it has to be like ambient noises yeah. like i can't listen to songs with like lyrics in it because it distracts me and like like i said when i'm doing the writing like i definitely agree to that but like or like there were people I know who cannot draw and talk to people at the same time. So like that yeah, is something exactly. where like, yeah, it's definitely like not something to be taken for granted when you're like, Oh yeah, I can just hop on stream and like do work. And, you know, I know some people who even stream and do work, but then say like, Oh yeah, the stuff I stream is just like fun, like sketches or like warm up or cool down kind of stuff. And my real work, like my better work is done off stream. <laughs> like I'm yeah. almost the opposite. Like I need to stream in order to stay focused on stuff in general. Yeah, dude, yeah. But even more than that is like, I almost think I do better work when I am having a conversation or talking to people than I am yeah. like, when, when I'm not. But I guess it also depends oh, on sure. like, what your goals are. Like my yeah. goal isn't to have like hyper precise, pristine artwork. Like it's almost the opposite. Like I want that kind of, I did it on paper look, even though I'm doing it digital. And a lot of that is like, well, that's the line I made moving on. <laughs> you know? Yeah. True, true, true. Yeah. <clears throat> no undo. <laughs> yeah. There's no undo on paper. So <laughs> yeah. Um, I do that's interesting. a copious amount of whiteout. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> true. Um, it's just, it's interesting you said that before though about um you know like you work harder or do or yeah work harder when you're on stream or mm -hmm. um it definitely recently and um w yeah with the with the paper making stream like I work a lot harder if I've got the stream going like because I know that there's people there watching and um you know even sometimes recently i've been doing these like speed run things on the stream and mm -hmm. but but even putting that aside like even knowing that there's people watching like i'll be constantly making paper whereas right. if i wasn't streaming i might make like 10 sheets and then get distracted by watching something else and mm -hmm. then you know waste like half an hour here or an hour there but when i have the stream going it's like paper 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 until the stream's done right. so um i'm really appreciating it uh, appreciating it for that reason as well as like meeting people in the community and all that stuff so yeah Very yeah it's cool. a it's a hundred percent exactly right like it's the the even if you have zero people talking or yeah, zero yeah. people on the little viewer count on obs yeah, or whatever you use it's the potential for anybody to drop in at any moment and you <laughs> exactly. want to be doing something for them. Right. Yeah. So it keeps you, it keeps you going. It keeps you focused. So exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's really cool. And, you know, with the whole pandemic COVID situation, um, you know, I definitely missed last year, like interacting with, I'm used to having people around when I'm working at the right. studio or even at my shop. I, I had a shop, I had a dodgy paper shop for a year and a half. Um, and, you know, I'd always had people coming around uh, or that was or, like, they could be random customers or, mm -hmm. you know, friends or people in the art scene. But I was always used to being like making paper, but also interacting with people who were coming in. And, um, and then, you know, last year doing it, virtually was really really helpful like it kind of yeah i guess saved my motivation um and yeah that was awesome that like you know being on twitch and also being on discord with a few people from the studio um yeah it was really really kept it kept kept it together yeah 
I definitely, yeah. This is very cool to be able to do that kind of stuff. Mm. I really would love to be able to have that studio experience again. Um, you know, I talk a lot to people about like self-taught versus be going to school. And honestly, like these days with the internet and Twitch and YouTube, there's so many tutorials out there. Oh, course, where yeah. learning the technical knowledge, I don't think it's necessary to go to art school anymore. I don't think it's necessary, but I think the things that I got out of it was one-on-one -on -one interaction with a professor or a mentor who can yes. not only like give you verbal pointers and feedback, but can actually like show you how to do something right like yes yeah. how to hold a pencil how to hold that pencil when making a specific kind of line right or a brush or whatever right the being in the same physical space is a is something that i i very much appreciated and then on the other side of it um having studio space and like a, a community a community of artists and uh, a communal work area as well um just working in that environment with other artists is also something that is like ener like energizing and um kind of there's like a little like i'm not a very competitive person but there is just a little mm. bit of competition where you're like oh man that person did something really cool and i want to do something cool too yeah, maybe sure, not sure. better but like you're definitely like there is almost like a sort of one upsman kind of thing that helps you like progress it, you know, in your own stuff, right? Yeah, definitely. And <laughs> yeah, and and also if there's in the shared um, studio environment, if people, I mean, look, it can go both ways. It can either go like if people are all busy working, then that rubs off and usually, you know, everyone will be working and focusing. Mm -hmm. um, or it can go the completely opposite. And if people are messing around, then everyone's messing around, you know? So, right, right. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's great. I mean, we all like to have fun and, you know, it's, yeah. So, um, yeah, hundred percent. It's like the studio environment does kind of create, yeah, like a, well, it creates a creative environment. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. 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 Which is like something that's like really awesome in my opinion. And mm. Like, I guess it's why, like, companies like Google and whatever have ping pong tables and, like, basketball exactly. courts and whatever, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, you kind of, you start to get off on a tangent, and then everybody starts to get off on a tangent. But it's nice to have those breaks to kind of let loose and unwind during the day so that you can uh, be more productive in the times when you are working. Exactly. We do play a lot of um, pong. We call it art pong um because we don't have a proper like a, a proper table we mm. just use like a light box but um you're also <laughs> yeah and you're, you're also allowed to um you're allowed to rebound and um you know if the ball hits anything else in the studio you can hit it again as long as it hits something nice. so it's kind of like this match this mash between like squash and table tennis um that's it's very awesome. fun yeah, yeah that sounds amazing <laughs> And you can hacky, like as long as it doesn't hit your hands, like it can, you can hacky with your <laughs> knees or feet or shoulders. Yeah, it's really all good. in a game of pong. Nice. All in the game of pong. So you can like say you, you hit the ball at me. I can like body it. It can hit my chest and then I can hit it again. If it's like, you know, if it's too, too fast or stuff like that. Yeah, it's really, really fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, that sounds great. I love the yeah. sort of... Uh, I almost want to say like Calvin ball approach, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. but like just the, the, the chaos and sort of like, pff, we don't need rules. We'll make up our yeah, own. Nah, we make our own rules for sure. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> again, fun. that's sort of like the vibe though, working in a studio anyway, with a bunch of creative people is it's not, you're not going to exactly. play by the rules. You're just going to do whatever the hell you want to do. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is so, very good. Cool. Times. Um, mm -hmm but uh yeah is there i guess we're, we're you know we're we've been talking for a while here um is there anything uh, that we haven't gone over that you would maybe want to say uh to the audience as sort of parting thoughts yeah i don't know uh i guess um yeah i mean i just 
try to stay creative. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it's starting to sound cheesy because I say it so much, but um, yeah, I mean, look, with yeah, with my with the paper um, and with my art, I just uh yeah like honestly i just try to stay creative whenever i can whether that's for work or if i've got um free time so i think that's like yeah that's 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 the most important thing um that i would pass on is to is to stay creative <laughs> yeah but um in terms of other things uh i don't know i guess yeah yeah i guess um yeah, oh, yeah. so guess kind it. of yeah. spinning off of the uh the vibe of staying creative do you have any advice for people who um are maybe in a creative like block uh, mm. like how to get out of writer's block artist block whatever like kind of we want to be creative but just not sure how anymore <laughs> yeah i think um i think an important thing is to you know try it's so cheesy but like try something different like try a different medium do you know get get inspired it could be it could be uh, you know not to say copy someone else but in terms of mediums like there could have been an artist you saw working with a medium that you never worked with so um yeah i think flipping it up is and and switching up what how you're working is is my main um piece of advice on getting out of a creative block because if you're getting blocked at whether it's writing or you need to do you know you're working on a painting in acrylics or um whatever the specific project is if if, if that's what's you, you know if that's what's getting you blocked up then just be like look that can wait for a bit and go try something completely different um i think that's really helped me in the past um uh yeah to get to get out of to get out of um creative blocks because you know i might get bogged down and you know i'm doing all these ink drawings or something and then you know i get sick of them and so i'm like you know well you know put that aside and i'll just try to make something out of wood or whatever it is so um yeah i think yeah my main my main piece of advice would just be to you know don't don't um don't get down about that one thing that's blocking you just try something else to freshen it up and then you can always come back to it yeah well there you go folks don't pigeon your don't pigeonhole yourself yeah. and, yes. uh, yeah. <laughs> and try try new things uh experiment i would even add to that like even if you want to keep working in a particular medium like if you find an artist who has like a different style within that medium try and like be like oh like say for for me right i comic books is like an easy way to go about things say you're like really used to that like mike mignola or you know frank miller style of like really thick chunky black shadows try doing something you know like jim lee or todd mcfarland with a lot more cross hatching or something and that might be able to like break exactly, you out of that yeah. funk you know but uh Switch it up awesome i think we've had a wonderful hey. conversation here i learned a lot um and i i think i had a lot of fun um we can uh you can find uh dodgy paper here the the pulp professor uh on <laughs> twitch.tv slash uh dodgy is it dodgy underscore paper or is it yes. just dodgy yeah. underscore dodgy i don't know why paper. but yes underscore paper um and then you can find uh his artwork from cheeky he on instagram.com slash staying creative it is creative but with an h instead of an r yes. um i'll have links and things as well that you guys can uh find his artwork too any other shout outs you need anything i missed <clears throat> oh no that's all good thanks for having me yeah it's been a great other chat so um, oh, yeah. yeah no nah, all good and uh hope your listeners can stay creative <laughs> hell yeah uh so go yeah. go follow <laughs> definitely look at uh staying creative the the artwork there is really awesome um and if you guys are looking for just chill vibe streams um to like help you kind of get in that flow state 
uh, twitch.tv slash dodgy underscore paper. Yes. Uh, thanks for that. being on the show. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much. Hey. All right. We will see you next time. <laughs>